Let's move on to the next. Uh, wait, Raph, huwag ka alis ha. Marami pa tayong pag-uusapan. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yan ang Principal office natin. mo. Uh-uh. <laughs> no oh, problem po. Okay. Uh, you may start sharing um, Mo. I think your co-host, so you may do so. I think on your own. So the next speaker is Dr. Marianette Morales Vega. She is an associate professor the, and the director of the Material Science and Engineering Program of the College of Science, University of the Philippines. Mo, as we fondly call her, uh, obtained her PhD at the Graduate School of Nanotechnology, University of Trieste in Italy. In, in 2017, she was an Australia APEC postdoctoral fellow at the Institute for Frontier Materials, Deakin University. Uh, her fields of interest are Raman and fluorescent spectroscopy, synthesis of magnetoplasmonic nanostructures, graphene and noble metal based sensors, nano hybrid materials for environmental remediation, nanotechnology, nanoparticle enhanced spectroscopy, and nanomaterials characterization in general. And the more fundamental aspect of things, she's also interested in looking at magnetism and magnetic, magnetic materials, uh, which would deal on computational chemistry, in particular density functional theory. So Mo, I, I don't think you will have a problem with time, but it's up to you, you can take your time. So yeah, without further ado, uh, anytime you're ready. Uh, this will be short. Dr. Vega, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh... Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to be awake this early <laughs> to talk about my favorite topic. Um, so uh, as mentioned, I'm from the Material Science and Engineering Program of the College of Science. Uh, first off, uh, I would like to thank uh, these agencies and uh, units, National uh, Natural Sciences Research Institute, NSRI of UP Diliman, uh, DOST Pichard for um, financial support and for supporting our research for the past two years. Okay, so if you are wondering, uh, okay. So if you're wondering uh, where the material science and engineering in the College of Science is, we are housed at the uh, CSRC, the Computational Sciences Research Center, uh, in the middle of the National Science Complex in UP Diliman. And currently, we boast of two <laughs> equipment that are in, in MSEP, which is the UVVIS spectrometer and the contact angle measurement instrument. And uh, these are the beautiful people of uh, MSEP. Uh, our faculty is composed of uh, professors from MSEP, uh, NIP, chemistry, and there are affiliate units who advises uh, students, uh, MSE students from these institutes, NIP, chemistry, IESM, and NIMBB from history, I think. So this was taken in our last um, year-end party. So hopefully we can have another party like this in the future. Um, I have started forming a small group, uh, and I am the smallest in this group, the nanospectroscopy group. and. Uh, we are, uh, what we do currently, at least for a start, we try to find nanoparticle-based solutions for some prevalent problems. Um, it can range up to environment, environmental monitoring, um, some uh, detection of contaminants in water, and we synthesize different types of nanoparticles. It could be in the form of spheres and rods, and also you will see later on some um, anisotropic shapes of nanoparticles. So uh, these two gentlemen here are uh, 
graduating hopefully very soon in a couple of days uh, they will be defending their master's thesis so um, but hopefully um, some new students will be joining okay so our main weapon for annihilation as i would always say to my students is gold nanoparticles so it's ubiquitous in most um, applications in biomedical and uh, even in electronic applications because it's very easy to synthesize and it's very versatile in the sense that you can attach several entities on the surface and it can perform a particular application so a range of materials that you can uh, adhere on the surface of the gold nanoparticle could range from proteins dna lipids and depending on your application you can customize or functionalize it with these types of molecules um the main advantage uh if you are not familiar yet um, it has very remarkable properties in the nanoscale and very different from its bulk counterpart. And as I've said, it's very easy to make, uh, cost-effective, and in most applications that we use gold, we only use very little. So it can last us several years for just one gram. Um, it's highly tunable. You can, by simple modifications in the synthesis process, you can change the shape and each shape would give you um, a particular property, uh, specialized properties in its, uh, in optical terms. It's also used in biomedical applications because it's biologically benign. You can practically drink uh, gold nanoparticles, but don't do that. Um, it's stable in AQ solution, that's why it can uh, be used for biological samples. And since it will be in solution in most applications, it could serve as um, a buffer or to protect the sample from photodegradation. And that, as I've mentioned earlier, it can be functionalized in several ways. So um, some applications that uh, utilizes gold would be, um, I think the most important here, I think would be uh, hyperthermia in cancer therapy. So these are being injected in rats now um, for clinical testing and then it heats up the, the tumor locally um, and then it kills the, a particular site of the cell, not the whole tissue. And catalysts also it's, has a very high efficiency in conversion of um, different um, gases and um, acids. Um, the one particular application that I'm interested in now, so we did direct our research in this types of applications is on diagnostics. So this is... Um, um, an ambitious application, which is the early de detection of dengue, and um, also of re our recent situation is the SARS-CoV-2. So hopefully there are configurations now that utilizes gold nanoparticles for detection. So what's remarkable about gold nanospheres is that its ability to change its color, the perceived color, um, just by changing the size. So, and you will see later on that uh, if you change the shape also, the color that it um, transmits would also be different. So it's being utilized also for diagnostics uh, because some, some molecules causes gold nanoparticles to, to aggregate. So the changes in color would signify the presence of these types of molecules. So that's how it's being used as a sensor. Uh, ito, this, uh, this is a typical absorption spectrum of a gold nanoparticle solution with a mean diameter of 10 nanometers. And all my students already know this by heart that if you uh, measure it in the UVVIS spectrometer, it will absorb at 
uh, around 520 nanometers. And it changes when uh, some morphological changes happen in the bulb. So thank you, Raf, for giving the introduction on the Raman spectroscopy, so I don't have to do it now. Um, so uh, in our applications, the main tool for detection, apart from having the nanoparticles, it is coupled with the Raman spectrometer. Um, and as mentioned earlier, uh, it tracks the changes in the energy that is scattered from, that is provided by the vibrational modes of the sample. A modification of that, since this is a very weak um, phenomenon, uh, one way to, to work around this weak signal is the first technique is the uh, TERS, and then another technique would be the SERS, the Surface Enhanced Raman Spectrometer. This doesn't make use of the STM. It is the same Raman technique, but when you add nanoparticles in them, the resulting scattered Raman signal is significantly enhanced. And there are reports that it could be uh, enlarged by 10 to the 8 experimentally, 10 to the 15 theoretically. Um, and one example that I placed here is that uh, a very small concentration of mercaptopropionic acid is um, measured using Raman. And if we put the nanoparticles in the solution, so by the way, this is a solution measurement, wet sample, wet drop, uh, that is being measured, then all the signals or, or the significant modes are enhanced. Two nanomolar uh, concentration is small in bulk, in bulk point of view. So uh, it's not quite single molecule, but uh, it's already acceptable for um, solutions measurements. Um, so just to illustrate, it has been demonstrated that um, for patients that are infected with dengue uh, would show a, remark <clears throat> a markedly different Raman spectra compared to a blood of a healthy person. So we, want, we would like to bank on this um, phenomenon in detecting the, the infection earlier in, uh, or at the onset. So uh, we are talking about concentrations lower than two nanomolar of the infected, uh, of the infection. So um, in, in this way, we, what we are modifying is not the technique, but the type of substrate. So the, the metallic nanoparticle that will be in the vicinity of the molecule that you want to detect. So we are um, synthesizing various morphologies and um, trying to come up with the uh, optimized configuration that will give us the biggest uh, enhancement in the Raman. So uh, the most sophisticated that we have um, synthesized is the gold nanostars. And uh, the reason for um, studying these types of uh, anisotropic uh, nanoparticles is due to the presence of the hotspots. So when you use spheres, uh, you generate this region of a small region of high electromagnetic field at the junctions of the spheres. And so when you measure Raman, you would want your, uh, your nanoparticles to aggregate at uh, um, not so much, but only a little bit. And the most ideal would be the, the dimers. But in the case of nanostars, you don't, have, you don't rely on the aggregation of the, the nanoparticles. A single nanostar could give you several points of hotspots, as you can see at the bright spots at the tips. And it occurs at the tips. And um, just to emphasize that the highly tunable nature of these nanostars, you can change the optical properties by making the spikes longer, thinner, and uh, this will just be brought about by the changes in the synthesis process. Just very easy. Um, but one thing that we have seen in 
this uh, study is that it's not um, stable for long periods of time. So it, it experiences aging. And as you know, if your substrate changes its optical properties, it will affect its Raman um, response. And to illustrate that, um, these are Raman spectra of the pure mercaptoethanol, also at very small concentration. And uh, you can see there is no signal to speak of. This is actually a signal from water. Um, if you use nanostars that have longer tips, uh, you get a little bit of response, but it becomes optimized when you have um, nanostars that are uh, in the mid-range, intermediate length, not blunt as a nano popcorn, but midway between a very sharp tip and uh, the one that gives you a wavelength maximum of uh, 689. So we are seeing here, this is one example that uh, there is a threshold of the maximum enhancement that can be produced with these uh, nanoparticles or nanostars. So this is what we are trying to investigate more systematically. Um, since this suffers in degradation or it morphs into a uh, popcorn and we do, we do not want to, that to happen. Uh, so there should be a way to protect the surface from changing. Um, and so I have um, found that coating it with a single monolayer of mercaptopropionic acid um, extends its lifetime by to up to one year, which is a huge achievement because uh, if you have synthesized these types of um, narrow structures, um, they're very unstable, so they would really want to go into a sphere formation. Okay. So, um, as you've noticed uh, here in the previous slides, we are investigating solutions. So that is the advantage of SIRS. You can measure molecules in solution form, even in wet drops. Uh, which I which I have to ask Raf if it's possible for STM. Um, but very little literature is present to, in using uh, the SIRS technique, so liquid colloidal substrates on detection of highly dense solid samples. So the um, model system that I was that I had the opportunity of testing because um, this is part of another project. Uh, we I am tasked. I was tasked to uh, find a certain structure of zirconia in a dense stabilized zirconia sample that are being used for biomedical implants. So uh, spinal discs, this is a ball joint uh, hip replacement. And these are the, the ones that are used for dental implants. So, so you could, we could all appreciate the succeeding slides. Uh, the stabilized form of zirconia is in the tetragonal structure. So this is the spectrum that is expected. When it is exposed in high humidity environment, it changes a little bit uh, in a monoclinic structure. And this entails a about 5% increase in volume. So if you could imagine if it's, in, if it's inside your body uh, and then it changes structure just because it, it's in a humid environment exposed to uh, water, there would be cracking that will, that will occur if this changes its structure. So the Raman spectrum of such structure monoclinic is given in this bottom spectrum. Um, so a crazy idea came that what if I use SIRS on these types of um, application, uh, finding a monoclinic structure in a sea of all tetragonals. So I was skeptical at first uh, that this will work, but uh, I have to graduate. So uh, 
I have to make it work. Um, so here, uh, this is a sample of a spinal disc and um, the normal Raman, just to compare it with the SERS effect, um, I measured a particular area, a, a, sh a small area with a normal Raman in confocal mode, um, and then drop the substrate on that same area and then measure um, the source signal afterwards. And this is what I found. Um, so remember that when it's in tetragonal, you want two that are in the uh, 140 and 275. And looking just by looking at that face value, you don't, you don't see a lot of difference. But uh, by the way, the nanostars that were used here gives you uh, an absorbance maximum at uh, 690. So that's um, an intermediate size of spike. And But if you, you focus into the standard deviation of the uh, plots, then you see some activity happening in uh, the range where you would want the monoclinic peaks to appear. So that's between uh, 190 to 200, or uh, maybe a little wider, 180 to 200. So now it's starting to appear. This is a clean surface without nanostars, and then on your on the right will be the uh, surface with nanostars. And if we take the uh, total area under the curve of those uh, spectra, then it becomes more evident that in this region where the bright line appears would be the position of the ones that have transformed from tetragonal to monoclinic. And uh, we are, this is quite an achievement because we are talking about a two volume percent of monoclinic sample, uh, monoclinic phase in uh, the whole implant. So in bulk terms, again, this is, uh, almost single molecule level. It's very hard to find this kinds of structure. Um, okay, so as a summary, and uh, I will also be mentioning some of the future work that we are doing regarding these topics. Uh, this is the synthesis of nanostars is always a challenge. Um, it's hard to find uh, surfactant that will allow us to stabilize the nanostars in solution for several months. At the same time, the uh, surfactant should also allow the penetration of the incident light and give you still a higher Raman signal. And that will only happen if the hydrocarbon chains are very small or short so that it still ha have uh, it, it still has access to the metallic surface. Um, so, but then this one, this is a relatively short uh, hydrocarbon chain for mercaptopropionic acid, and it uh, exhibits long-term stability over one year. And, and hopefully, just on this topic, we could find other uh, surfactants that could do the same. And in this one, so we have shown that it is possible to use the technique surface enhanced Raman in a solid surface uh, of an insulator that is highly dense and polished. So it, not only for porous powders, not only for solutions in uh, molecules in solutions and uh, yeah, we would like to do more experiments on this, probably with another material that is of importance uh, in other fields. And uh, as an outlook, um, in terms, uh, Ralph has mentioned that it is a resonant technique, uh, but, sir, but for SIRS, it is not always true that the uh, highest Raman enhancement would be achieved when the incident light is the same as the absorption of the metallic surface. 
um, the general rule, but it is not supported uh, well enough by experiment, is that the excitation wavelength should be straddled in between the absorbance wavelength and the mode that you are trying to, to detect. And so, uh, and this is the point that we want to clarify in most of our experiments. Uh, my student, Joven Angeles, will be uh, clarifying on this uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So, uh, you can check out his presentation so that we would know uh, something about this. And also, um, we have also investigated growing the nanostars on 2D materials. Um, again, one of my students, Hill Cabrera, will be presenting on this uh, topic Monday on Monday. So watch out for those presentations. So I guess that's it for me. I initially wanted to uh, present their results, but I changed my mind because I didn't want to um, steal their limelight when they present it for the first time tomorrow and on Monday. So just uh, watch out for their presentation. Um, a little, uh, what do you call this, plugging. Um, commercial. So if you are interested in these types of uh, research, we are open for, for studentships in our laboratory and you get to synthesize sophisticated shapes of nanoparticles, be, be it silver or gold. And yes, Yan, oh, no, I miss ko na kayo. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Thanks, Mo. Dami na pala. <laughs> These are your students or students I in know. general? I know. Um, we held our poster presentations for the uh, ah, lab see. classes. I see. Ceramics and um, electric and magnetic measurements lab. I see. Oh, nga pala. Okay. Questions from... The audience. Okay. So we have time for one or two, even three questions. Short you lang ba? You may, raise, you may raise your hand or you may unmute your, yourself. Elmer? Ah, good morning, sir. Al. Good morning, po. Good morning, po. Yeah, good morning. Uh, very interesting work, uh, Mo. Thank I didn't you, even know that you got. Uh, Clearly, I used to work for implant and artificial skin. So yung uh, silver uh, impregnation on microbial cellulose would be a very interesting project right there for antimicrobial properties. Okay. But not all silver are equal. So pwede na natin gawin yun tomorrow. I have microbial cellulose, yes. biocompatible, <laughs> and then implantable. So pwede mo nang gawin yun. Bigyan kita ng materialis bukas. May mga silver <laughs> na po kami. Nandun lang. Nakaimbak lang. Ayon. Pwede na tayo magsama doon. So that's one. That's for thank you, thank you. both optical and implantable. And since my material is the same material as Nata de Coco, we have abundant supply of materials if we go production scale. <laughs> but it's a nanoscale nanofiber, about 140 nanometers. But the one Perfect. that I asked a question earlier is uh, I'm working with uh, Wendell Rivera, who's uh, the newly inducted to NAST. He is interested. He developed a methodology for uh, then get saliva detection. I'm helping him to develop a saliva detection for COVID-19. Uh, so uh, clearly, the most of the laminar flow uh, uh, antibody rapid detection is now being done on gold particles. That's partly your work as well. Uh, I don't know yet how it will be. I'm talking to Singapore later this afternoon to get the actual antigen antibody uh, supply for potential detection. Uh, these are the specific ones that are for antibodies produced against COVID-19. So it dawned on me that we can use your particles and we can detect it with Raman. Of course, you'll have to compete with Elmer. We're working on terahertz detection naman with Elmer, at least all on a conceptual basis. But uh, again, any non-biological with some biological combination of uh, Confirmation. I'm trying to avoid kasi the double 
detection that's being done right now. Antibody plus RT-PCR pa. Oh, <laughs> so, man. tapos hindi ka pa sigurado sa viral load. So, I'm trying to solve this whole get back to work uh, uh, COVID-19 detection. So, if we can say that you have no virus and you have the antibody, go. Go back to work. So, I need two types of detection, a biological and a physical. So, kay ni Elmer looks like are the potential physical testing. May it be terahertz, may it be Raman. Again, we might have to attach it to uh, a gold particle if need be to enhance the concentration of the antigen that you're trying to detect or the antibody. But uh, it's something that I'm very open to discuss and collaborate with, with your group uh, now that I see what you're doing. Yes, sir. Is that Thank possible? Of course. <laughs> very welcome. And and are you in the are you in the triple M or are you in uh, nasa CSRC po nasa CSRC but uh, of course Dr. Estacio is very generous uh, in sharing oh, the laboratory with us as well. Yeah, Sir Al. Uh -uh. Mo, Sir Al, hello. Okay, na ba? Sir Al Mo heads the Particle Science Engineering Program of the College of Science. Dalawa yes. po kasi yung material science engineering program ng UP Diliman. Both okay. are graduate programs and both uh, hand out their own diplomas. Kaya sila magkapang oh. degree. One is under the, the, the met and mining. Okay, and, yeah, that's uh, the one with Leslie. Yes po, exactly. Uh -huh. And there is a, a, a program that is co-implemented by the College of Science. Uh, this Mo heads this, depart, this, this program. Graduate okay, program. okay. Uh -huh. That's very good. Nasaan yung lab? Uh, are you in, uh, Sir, nandun complex? po sa mismong complex. Nasa gitna. Gitna, gitna actually. Nasa likod ng opisina ni Gani. Yung yes. uh, oh, ka-duplex okay. na building. Yung ka-duplex oh, na building. Sadyain kita pag bisita kay Gani next week. Oh, sure. Or the so, following week. Oh, sabihan niyo ako. So I, can, I, I may also be able to uh, catch up with you. Yes. Yeah, let's all meet together. Definitely. Okay, Dr. Sir Africa is too modest to, to, was too modest to introduce himself. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay na yan. Well, well, uh, sige well, po, Sir Al. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Any thank other you, Amber. Thank you, Mo. Uh, thank you po. And good news po, gold can also be used with terahertz. So, talagang pwedeng combination. Alright. Thank you. Nice to know. Usap tayo. Any other Ayun. questions from the uh, audience? Tulungan natin si Elmer. Naka madetect okay. ni Elmer yung COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> thank you po. If there are no more questions, ah, po, sige, sir. Uh, let me, before I let you go, Mo? Ay. Sige, handali lang ha. Mayroon tayong customary sharing of screens. Yun. And I would just like to read this. Uh, Paase A. Palms presents this certificate of appreciation to Marianette B. Morales Vega for delivering the lecture entitled Gold Nanoparticles as Substrates for Surface Enhanced Raman Spectroscopy on the 23rd July 2020, Aman as part of the parallel session 2.2 during the 40th Paase anniversary and 2020 APAMS, Manila, Philippines, signed Dr. Gisela P. Concepcion, Paase president and myself. So thank you very much, Mo. Thank you also for the invitation. Oh, it's an honor to, to present. work with you guys in the very near future. So let's move on to- Thank you. Thank you, Mo. Aha, wait lang po. Before we welcome Dr. Hermosa, sorry na, I was requested by Dr. Concepcion magkaroon tayo ng counting attendance. How do we do about, how do I go about this one? Uh, the chat na lang, name. I think I have to... May I request everyone to please turn on, their, even for a brief moment, momentarily turn on your videos. Quickly, don't be shy. Yeah, pakita kayo, kahit hindi pa kayo naliligo. <laughs> Morning, everyone. <laughs> Ipass na siguro natin si Mama. I'm sure she's very busy. Si Mama just. Yeah, pero palagi kami nagpo-photo off eh. Pag nag... Uh... Ay, uh, oma pala. <laughs> Bida. Hindi, hindi, para, para magbilangan. Mag uh, tapos maninigil, maninigil niya si Giselle na gano'n. Uh, membership. <laughs> ah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Camille. Right. 
Oh, bakit? Ang shy naman ng mga ating audience. Wala nang gusto magpakita. Ne. Shy. Jackie. Ayun nila. Nagro-roll call. <laughs> All right, uh, probably yeah. we can start. Yung pag wala tayong magagawa pag walang camera. Next screenshot. Paano na. kayo magiging assistant, okay na. associate at saka full member sa paasa eh kung hindi kayo nagpapakita? Okay. One more, the second page. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, you may turn off. You may turn off. Ah, so busy po yata, sir. Hindi, nandiyan eh. Nakasama sa participants eh. Kaya nga po, busy po yata. Hindi nag-on ng camera. Nakamute din si ma'am. <laughs> Siya pa yung nag-request. Ah, sige, okay na. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. Thank you po. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Ay, nandiyan si ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Okay na. Ayan, sama niyo si Giselle. <laughs> Oo. Well, pinamonitor ko lang lahat kasi interesado rin ako dun sa neuroscience ni Vince Daria. Brain. Yeah, hati nga eh. But Doon naman sa technology, kay... yung ano, speaker from uh, Caltech and uh, NASA, eh, yung mga, ano, uh, micro, yung mga, ano, uh, the abiotic uh, rock <laughs> contribution <laughs> to life, no? And I have this uh, interest in methanotrophic bacteria our rock-eating uh, shipworms. But anyway, I heard you, Al, uh, yeah. regard our um, desire to develop a uh, diagnostic. There are already um, COVID-19 diagnostics based on gold nanoparticles. Yes, yeah. there are. So, Marami, uh, pero uh, we're going to do a uh, terahertz or Raman and, spectroscopy, Giselle. Oh, uh, yeah. And 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 <laughs> bar, no? Pero yung uh, K- Vega, interesante. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, yeah, nah. Saliva, coupled with the yeah. saliva. Yeah, okay. we're, 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 yeah, we're meeting Singapore with Wendell this afternoon. Okay. Wonder- Great. Uh, so, we'll get it going, lady. <laughs> the three parallels Boss. are going so well. And I, yes. I'm the cell phone, the desktop, and the laptop. Tatlo, tatlo. Ako naman, iPad, iPhone, at the computer. Elmer, Everyone, uh-huh. thank you so much. Sige, I'm continuing thank to... Thank you very much for your support. Huh? <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Everyone, that's Dr. Giselle Concepcion, our president. Uh-oh. Thank you um, for gracing us with your presence. Thank you. So important. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, so let's...